Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. If you're watching this channel for the first time, I often talk about DIY synthesizers based on Raspberry Pi or other mini computers. And one of the more frequently asked questions on this channel is, can I run my favorite Windows VST plugins on a Raspberry Pi? And unfortunately, the answer is most likely you can't because Raspberry Pi uses an ARM-based processor like the ones found in smartphones, while Windows mostly is at home on Intel processors, and those both chip architectures use different instruction sets. But why use a Raspberry Pi when you can also use a smartphone-sized actual Intel PC? I bought this device with my own money, so I'm not going to advertise the company here, but you can find this if you search for a small PC with a touchscreen <laughs> on Google or Bing. So if you're interested how this PC performs in a hardware setup, please join me in this video. Here we go. Let's quickly run down the specs. This PC runs Windows 11 on an Intel Celeron J4125 processor with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of eMMC SSD. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, two HDMI outputs, RJ45 network, four high-speed USB ports, an audio art jack, internal speakers, a battery and a touchscreen. It's the size of two smartphones stacked on top of each other and can be used like a smartphone for media consumption if you want that. The 5.5 inch touchscreen has a resolution of 720p and is bright, contrasty and responsive. The battery has a capacity of 2500 mAh. It lasts for 4 to 5 hours in my experience. This device is cooled passively, so it gets quite hot when put under stress. It never gets too hot to touch, though. Okay, so let's get the most important question out of the way first. How's the latency like? Latency is the time between sound entering the system and leaving it again. We want this to be as low as possible to avoid the disconnected feeling when playing music. So here's my test setup. On the left side there's the mini PC and on the right side a Roland S1 synthesizer. In order to measure latency, I record the left side of the S1 stereo output directly to my Zoom R20 audio recorder and the right side will go through through the PC and then to the R20. I will then open the resulting recording in Audacity, zoom in and measure the difference in time between both takes. In the first test, I'll use the S1's sound over USB feature and Windows Wave Out audio driver with the default settings. Halving buffer size brings latency down to 10 milliseconds. Halving it again, we're roughly at 7 milliseconds. But pushing it further breaks the audio system. The freely available ASIO for all driver yields a very usable 3.3 milliseconds.
Once again, reducing buffer size will break the system. Last but not least, using external interfaces and vendor-specific AZ drivers will give you varying results, in this case 5 milliseconds. Another question you might have is, can I use this as a power source for my hardware setup? So here's one of those Roland mini synths and a MIDI keyboard and I just plug them into the PC and turn them on. So the answer is yes, both the keyboard and the synth work as intended. Next question. How fiddly is that touchscreen to use? Well, to answer that, here you can see me adding a plugin to track in real time. So the answer is, it's possible, but it's not fun. Changing the font size in Windows won't help you because software developers are free to ignore those settings and many DAWs choose to use tiny, tiny fonts. Oh, by the way, if you find this interesting and if you want to see more on devices like this in the future on this channel, please do the YouTube thing. If you're feeling generous today, you can also support me on Patreon, buy my music on Bandcamp or become a channel member using the button under this video. Thank you very much. Okay, and another important question you might have is, how much can the CPU take before it collapses? To answer that, I've loaded a song I'm working on at the moment. In this track, we have EM Voice with several plugins, two instances of Hyperion, which is comparably CPU intensive, some TR909 plugins, MT Power Drums, and TAL Noisemaker. All tracks have various additional EQs, compressors, and other magical sound enhancers in them. On the right side, you can see the CPU meter. Let's listen to this for a minute or so. As you could hear, this PC pulls through this track without any glitches, but it's really close to the edge. Yeah, and that's it for today. A tiny PC that fits right into your small synthesizer hardware setup. And if you think this was a good YouTube video, please consider subscribing to my channel or press the thumbs up button, which also helps a lot. And as always, Thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye. <sniffs>